Welcome to a Service Please Snack. Today, we're with Meriel, founder of Club Mexicana, the vegan Mexican restaurant all across London. I was always blown away by the people coming over to the store. And some of them, you know, might have been these archetypal, butchy kind of style men or something like that. And they'd be like, yeah, can I have the pulled pork um, thing? Because obviously they think it would like jackfruit. Yeah, and yeah. like, that is so fascinating that you completely made an accessible vegan brand that was inclusive, but also that people didn't really realize that they were yeah. actually entering that space. It was, they were coming for the vibes, like the way in which the food looked and tasted and probably like brought back to the table and looked fantastic. And it's like, so yeah, so was that always like an idea and the mission a little bit behind what you wanted to achieve or did that just come, that just came part of it? No, it was it was always it was always part of it. I remember like sitting in a cafe in Shoreditch, like thinking about what I wanted Club Max Connor to be before we'd even done the pop up, and it was it was about everything. It was like, you know, how did I want people to feel when they walked in or they walked up to the stall, and what did I imagine Club Max Connor to be? And it's like literally like the one video like at Pikes, literally like. <laughs> I want, this, I want this swimming pool, I want like this to be like awesome tunes, I want everybody to feel welcome, you know, um, and since, since going to Pikes, I'm like, it is actually Pikes, cool, so just copied them. Um, but yeah, like, just, I wanted it to be a bit of everything, I wanted, I wanted everyone to just feel fun, because that's what, to me, that's what was missing with vegan food at the time. There was vegan cafes and stuff, and I worked at one before starting Club Max, but everything, it was so serious. Animal rights posters yeah, on the walls there was kind of thing. Animal rights stuff, you know, it was like part cafe, part bookshop of like ethical books, and you know, even the coffee had some like story to it that was ended in tragedy or something. <laughs> like it was really, everything was really S sad. Serious. And I remember working in that cafe being like, this is not you know it's not something that people it's not aspirational like we used to say in advertising like you know it's not an aspirational brand or a thing that people want to do that's what veganism needs it needs like a rebrand it needs refresh and making it seem a cool fun interesting thing to do that people want they want to buy into this and that's kind of why that whole like I want like it to be you know Club Max Connor is like a swimming pool and amazing music and really like amazing like everybody's cool and you know it's fun and everything like that it's because I guess from my like advertising background that's what you have to do when you're creating a brand is like you have to envisage everything about it you have to go to a client and stand up and tell the story of like what their you know what their brand is and what it represents and if their brand was a person what would they be like and if it was like a building what would it look like and it's all that kind of stuff and i did kind of think that with club mexicana so yeah all the like fun stuff and all the like extra time spent dressing up our stall or you know putting up i remember at that street feast we we like killed ourselves trying to put up a projector, disco and, a projector. and a projector there was a projector yeah <laughs> But it was all it was all for that purpose. It was all because like I wanted people to 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 not walk past us, to just walk past and look at and look at us and be like, what is that? I want some of that. You know, we've all been to those places where you're like, I want to be in there. Yeah. And that's yeah, that's kind of like that was the the vision behind it because yeah, all all the vegan stuff and 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 all the vegetarian stuff in London was so boring, and it was just making people think that like. You eat in places because because they are enticing and they and they're fun and they're places that you want to be in and you want to sit there with your friends and have a couple of drinks and yeah of course you want the food to be good but does it matter whether the food has animal ingredients in it or not that was the point it's like it's they're all just ingredients whether it's like jackfruit and tofu or you know potatoes whatever as opposed to like a slab of a dead animal like it doesn't it doesn't matter because you, you well I mean it matters to me but you're there for like 90% of the reason you're there is of not what's on the plate agreed as long as it's good and yeah. tasty you know but yeah I think that's the biggest thing for me it's like you know the idea of breaking bread together and like sharing food and ideas and catalyzing things that's what about yeah. getting around a table of food is all about and as long as everyone's out enjoying that experience actually it allows other things to be able to flow from that yeah. and things like that you know we get it all the time at the restaurant with people saying like oh my god we didn't realize it was we didn't realize it was vegan or we get vegans who bring their non-vegan friends 
who literally trick them. And then at the end, they're like, ah, it was all vegan. And they're like, what? And they can't believe it. And it's kind of like, you know, it's sort of on a multitude of levels. It's like, we make our food as like, as flavorful and as punchy as possible so that people don't feel like they're missing out in any way. But also, you know, the service, the music, the vibe, everything, yeah. it's just all got to be like, on point. And I think going back to your point about like dressing up the stalls and, and pulling people in, I guess within the street food scene at that time and like knowing people's preconceived ideas about veganism, we um, we were conscious that we had to just do that extra step because we couldn't we couldn't just rely on like just having a menu and you know people could put like fried chicken or you know duck burgers or whatever up and people would come and get them. We had to pull them in and it was like disco balls, projector screens, like music, like dancing, even you know like I think we were some of the only people who had like branded t-shirts on all the time and you know every customer that came to the store we were like hello you all right like come and talk to us, if you don't want to talk to us have a little dance like you know and it was but you know, and it's quite nice. We still get to do that at the festivals and stuff, which is which is cool. But yeah, I mean, that, and that's a vibe in our restaurant as well. Not taking it too seriously and like making customers have an awesome time. Yeah, hundred percent. The the interesting thing for me is to understand the product of your own success has now taken it to a place like I was I was looking at articles in like the grocer and you put in veganism and things like that and there are just article after article of supermarket chains wine brands all of these things basically now in, indoctrinating and getting involved in it like has that ever been a point that's made you feel a little bit nervous or anxious of being like where do we now fit in within this space if everyone's doing it like are we still here standing out like we once were yeah 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 i think yeah i felt really really nervous about it all um supermarkets were coming up to us in in a curb and like sending teams who literally were like hi okay, we're from Marks and Spencer's and like we're developing some new food so like yeah can we try some of this jackfruit and then literally now they do like barbecue pulled jackfruit in Marks and Spencer's and it's like uh, I mean it took them but it, it, it took it did take them like three or four years to develop that and I suppose so I got initially nervous about it, then saw nothing. And then I remember talking to people and people were like, yeah, but the supermarkets take ages. And actually what's happened is they are, they do now do it. Their product, they're, it's not as good because it's still a supermarket yeah. and they just try and produce as like high volume as cheaply as possible as they've been like developing their stuff. And, and also other like vegan restaurants and stuff who, you know, but they're using like beyond meat burgers and stuff. I guess all, for, for all that time, we've just been like plodding on, continuing what we're doing, developing our food. Um, and I've just been getting, I suppose, more and more into it and more and more like invested in it. And then it just gets to a point where you're like, okay, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to let these, the, the sort of big competitors make me feel nervous because I really believe in what we're doing. I really believe in our food. We can also change our dishes at the drop of a hat as opposed to Marks and Spencer's and the Paul Jackfruit, which they've probably, you know, already, you know, they've probably got like five years worth of supply done. So I suppose, yeah, I just tried not to feel too intimidated. You know, it was a weird time when everybody started doing it. And I remember thinking, are we just going to get taken over? But I suppose that's where, you know, I do look to to other restaurants and being like, well, restaurants in general still survive, even though like supermarkets do all their food and there's lots of competition between them and competition's actually a good thing. And I suppose the good thing is that a lot of other vegan restaurants have come up and a lot of other vegan um, businesses. And actually now there is a whole community of like vegan food people that I can, that I can talk to and I don't feel that sort of loneliness. And um, it is really nice, really nice having that, and really nice seeing other people coming up through the ranks. And you know, you look at someone like Biff, like you know, they are now in Waitrose, and that's amazing. And they've come from, you know, Kerr, the same as us. And you know, it is, it's wicked seeing that. And, and I sort of, I can rejoice in other people's success. And I think all it is is like broadening the category. It's like you know. I, I suppose I've gone from feeling maybe a little bit nervous about it to like the more the merrier this is wicked because actually it's getting people talking it, everybody's seeing it it's, it has become the thing that I wanted it to become which is like 
a, a, a kind of aspirational thing where everyone's like, oh my God, there's veganism things everywhere. Everybody's doing it. All my friends are doing vegan stuff. Oh, they went to this vegan restaurant. They went to this vegan restaurant. I want to be in there. I want to be in the vegan club. And I'm like, that's wicked. That's, that's, where, that's exactly where I wanted it to go. 100%. Thanks for listening to that Service Please Snack. Please like, share, comment, do whatever you feel is necessary. It means a lot. Till next time, Service Please with Josh Patterson.